I just wanted to do a little recap of some of the highlights on Alone, Season 7, Episode 3. Uh, I won't go through over it all because I'm kind of going from memory right now. You gotta forgive me, my internet's terrible out here. And so, I can only do so much. That said, I uh, had a couple interesting moments, especially with... Uh, Kai and her Kylan and her uh, you know moose close call and so I figured I'd speak into that considering uh, what happened last season so uh, first off I just wanted to say that that was uh, that I was actually really impressed I really liked what she did initially which was to Rather, you know, everybody see everybody complaining about their spots. I complained about my spot. <laughs> uh, I've heard most of the contestants complain about their spots. Um, what I liked about what Kylan did was she uh, was having a tough time fishing, and so instead of complaining, she got up and moved a mile away and overnight camped. Um, a no, uh, long ways away from her base camp, which is something I haven't seen anyone else do. Uh, so, props to her for that. I thought that was awesome. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, yes, way to go out there and get it. Uh, if you got a bad location, move to a better part of your territory. And that's just what she did. She wasn't catching any fish. I actually looked at a, you know, you can look at the satellite images of where we were. And of all the all the places people have been, uh, I think Corey from this season and uh, Kylan have had from a satellite. You can see it some of the shallowest shoreline, which which given the way the lake trout work up there is pretty difficult for fishing. I, when I was fishing, I had a very shallow shoreline. Also, however, I did find a a point where the shore went into a deep area so I did find a point that was a nice fishing spot and that's where I caught basically all of my fish until it froze over um, so it's for it seems like for Kylan probably for Corey it's been really hard finding the good fishing point and uh, so good for Kylan for going a miles trying to find that rather than just being upset um, <clears throat> That said, those people that do have deep shorelines, uh, it's amazing to see how many fish they're catching in those nets, huh? Who would have thought you could just put such a, a 12 by 4 net right off the shore there in the water and just rake in the lake trout like that? <laughs> That's awesome. I've done some net fishing, but, you know, in Russia, the natives will uh, use nets quite often and... But man, I've never seen anything like the Great Slave Lake as far as that goes. Uh, so, that's pretty fun to watch. And it's going to be really interesting to see if these guys who are really slaying it on the fish. Mark, Amos, Joel, you know, a number of them. Uh, if they can sustain themselves on fish. That's what I've been really curious to see. Uh, I know if somebody gets big game, they're going to be able to make 100 days. But if... But I want to know if somebody can do the same just catching a bunch of fish. I'm sure they can, but I kind of want to see how that plays out. Um, anyway, back to Kylan's little adventure. So you got to remember you're only wa I'm watching um, just a fraction of her experience out there. So... I was kind of annoyed reading the internet and watching people be like, oh, what an idiot, she didn't bring her bow. Like, oh, geez. It's like, you got to be kidding me. Like, you, uh, you you think she went on a overnight hunting, fishing trip without bringing her bow? Of course, I'm sure she brought it. She, uh, she they didn't show it in the show, but all they showed her in the show doing was fishing. But you'll notice a couple of things. Uh... So she's off fishing on her shoreline, which I'm sure nobody holds a bow and fishes. I'm sure she set her bow down somewhere. Uh, you know, I'd probably given up on 
hunting for the morning because you hadn't had any action that morning or something. And then, uh, went out to fish. And so she was out fishing and then the moose came. And what you'll notice is as soon as the moose gets in the water and starts to swim away, she calls it and she calls it really well. And the, and the moose actually turns around and starts to swim back towards her. Um, I thought someone that's just called their moose for the first time. Uh, so I think it's pretty clear, just going by that, that what happened is she was caught out fishing when the moose walked by after a night of fishing slash calling moose slash hunting. One thing I noticed when I was out there is that I would call the moose. You know, you call and call and call and call and I'd pick berries and call and eat berries <laughs> and then uh you go home and and the moose that i saw were would come in the morning after i called them all night so it might take them hours and hours to uh, to wander over to where you are so so she probably got up in the morning she at after a night of calling moose and fishing and tried fishing some more, and the uh, moose just wandered up at an unfortunate time. So, I actually think she did one of the coolest things people have done so far, which is what people need to do to be successful out there, and that is cool to watch someone just buckle down, go out there, and make the best of it, which is what you gotta do. And so, she didn't catch any fish, she lost one, which is a bummer, and Nothing's worse than watching that moose walk by. That was a, what a killer. After, I'm sure, sure she called it in. I'm sure she had a bow. Don't worry, but it's just, you don't always have the bow right with you, especially when you're fishing. You're going to set it down somewhere. She probably set it down too far away, and the moose showed up, and she didn't have time to react. But it's a, it's this perfect example of how you can do everything really well just perfectly good idea and then make one little mistake and it all goes down you know you could you could see it going even more perfectly for her she could have called the moose in been ready with her bow had a perfect little blind set up pulled up taking her shot and just put it a few inches too far forward and hit the shoulder blade and not killed the moose you know it is or she could have shot it it jumps in the lake and swims off and never is recovered so anyway it a lot has to go well you have to everything has to be perfect you know for you to really get that you know for it to work out well so good job to kylan for that whole effort it was really cool to see i wish it wouldn't have been just about you know 30 seconds to a minute but longer because I think that is one of the cooler things that I've seen people do on this show so far is go out again um, now I was excited to see some of the other things too it was fun seeing Joel building his little food cache up there he had a different scaffolding system than I and uh, the, yeah the, that was the one time I thought having my saw was really handy was cutting the trees down for my uh, food cache. So, and you can see that there, chopping when you're on a ladder or scaffolding of some sort and you're chopping a tree down uh, with an axe, it's pretty dangerous. So I was happy to have the saw. It was good to see Joel switch to the saw too, but he looks like he's off to a promising start, getting a lot of fish. He found a musk ox, and I think he was seeing bear and moose sign on his territory. That's that's what you want right there. Um, who else was it? I don't remember if it was this episode, but I think Mark was just nailing the fish. He got, was getting a lot of fish and also had a bear in the area, which again is like just, uh, just what I would want. So maybe we'll see him try to draw in a bear and get one. Uh, or at least try. Again, it's easy to say... Yeah, I shoot a bear, but there's a, a lot of contingencies, as we saw with Kai or, as, or with any of these situations. As you saw with my first moose on my season, it's just 
you, you know, you still got to somehow make the shot, somehow place it right, somehow track the animal down, process it, protect it, etc. Um, I know Amos was getting enough fish to put it up in a cache. Uh, Joe, I'm still curious to see what Joe's plan is for providing food. Um, I forget if he, I know he doesn't have a bow, and I don't remember if he has hooks or a gill net. He has one or the other. And so he's been putting out a bunch of snares. But, yeah, rabbits can only take you so far. I was surprised how uh, little they slowed my weight loss when I was just eating rabbits. But let's see what he comes up with. Maybe he'll start getting a lot of fish. Um, and... I guess that's all. That's the main thing I wanted to touch on was, you know, I thought, thought it was interesting from a satellite. Everyone from the prior two seasons, I can see, had deep areas. Except Kai and Corey seemed to be in fairly shallow water. Corey, you could see, struggled to catch fish, though he did get one in his paracord net, which was awesome. I, <laughs> I was so excited when I got one in my net because it's just so much work to weave a net and then put it out there and catch it super satisfying uh then kai got a bite but hasn't reeled anything in yet everybody else seems to uh really well almost everybody seems to be dialing in on the fish so it's a fish heavy season we're seeing lots of game and wolverines and bear uh so i'm excited to see how it all plays out so roland again he got his sweet shelter made is obviously a lot of calories to build that kind of a shelter but but it's nice it, it's nice if he can if he can solve the calorie end of his you know if he can provide food then it'll be super cozy to be in that little bunk once it, in that little rock house once it gets buried in snow and is nice and warm uh warm <laughs> anyway it's all gonna be fun to watch it I forgot to mention we uh, saw Keith um, for the first time. So it was nice to get to see him. And he is doing a lot of set lines in the water, which is really smart. Um, it was amazing. I did a bunch too. It was amazing how little action you would get on him. The For whatever reason, the... The trout just didn't seem to be into the stationary food as it just sat on the bottom or floating there. Uh, definitely expected that to be more of a more of a hit than it was. I the only set line I had any success with was once I was ice fishing. I caught one with a set line, but yeah, so. I think he snagged one, as we saw, which is cool. I think that's, as far as I know, the first set line fish up there. <laughs> but, yeah, in general, it's it's super hard don't ma ma making those set lines work from the shore. I actually, not only did they not seem to love them and bite on them very well, but also uh, I would get my set lines all tangled up because you'd have it out there floating or whatever. And then a big storm would come in and the waves would throw my line all around and it'd snag on the rocks or do whatever. And I, I ended up losing several hooks. So I didn't, I didn't stick with the set lines too long. We'll see if maybe Keith can figure them out and get more fish than I did with them. But uh, it's got one so far, at least, that they've shown. So that's good.